because the mic works. And I even got heritage of three minutes from my previous speaker. So hi everyone, my name is Michael Shalit. That's the correct uh, uh, way to pronounce it. I'm malware researcher, team leader for Checkpoint. Um, what does that mean? Well, basically it means I don't speak the executive language. Okay, I'm not the CISO. Um, <clears throat> I'm not the highest ranking manager. Uh, my team, we're in the trenches. Okay, we're looking at malware as it's you know being created. Uh, we reverse engineer stuff. We try to track campaign when it works. We get bombers when it doesn't work, um, etc. With the main idea to stop malware and you know attacks in general, you first have to understand malware, right? Obvious. So <clears throat> today I'll be talking about uh, Android and a little bit about the future as we see it. But first, who the heck am I? Why should you listen to me? Well, this is my CV, but you shouldn't be, you, know, you shouldn't care about that unless you're looking to hire a hacker and I'm that cheap. Uh, so instead I'll tell you a story that I think uh, sums up um, a lot of my decisions in life. <clears throat> this is me and my dad. And when I was, I think, six or seven, um, I, I was already a geek, uh, as you might have uh, you know, guessed. And um, I told him, oh man, that would be so amazing if I could be a magician when I grew up, right? Like, you click your fingers and something happens in reality. It's so awesome. So he said, well, yes, son, but you know, sorry, reality doesn't work that way. Uh, but how do you differentiate between high level automation and technology and magic? He didn't exactly say it using these words, but that was the idea. Uh, so I thought about it and then I thought about it some more. And when I was eight, I wrote my first computer program, it was very silly, but it doesn't matter. Um, and basically what I'm trying to say is that we are living in a magical era. Uh, technology is, you know, the real life magic and we're all part of this revolution. Um, you know, digital is all around us, I don't need to explain you that. And I really wanted to be a part of that. And today I can click, you know, a different button, and not my fingers, but you know, uh, a keyboard and make happen, magic happen. Just like the guys from the panel that said before, um, a 16 year old kid alone can do quite a lot of damage or good things on the other side of the uh, equation. So great. Um, why do I care about fighting malware? Okay, I could be, I don't know, programming some other stuff. Um, when I found this picture of Google, uh, uh, like the Google, I had to use it because you know I actually owned this keyboard and I had glasses. Like this is this is me without the major stuff. Um, so <clears throat> I I you know I grew up plugged in into the digital uh, into the digital world. Uh, well, the internet when it became you know a thing, uh, etc. So you know when Russian mafia, uh, which is like you know. Uh, a big, uh, a white, uh, a white name for organized crime comes, you know, to your neighborhood. You're not happy about it. And when you know, organized financial malware are trying to exploit user innocence or technological vulnerabilities, um, you know, and make digital reality less safe, that pisses me off. Okay, this is my home. This is my neighborhood. I grew up in the matrix, <laughs> you might say. Um, Okay, so this is my fight, and this is my call, you know, call to action for all of you uh, in general. This is why, you know, I'm branded as a white hat because I care. Great. Why do I care specifically about Android? And, right, I'm supposed to be talking about the future research is about the next step, uh, not about, you know, seven years ago when Android was launched, uh, whatever. Um, well, the thing is that Android is not, you know, is only, only accelerating. Okay, <clears throat> this is, as you can see, a game console, uh, wearable stuff. Google Glass won't succeed, but a different solution will eventually uh, uh, come in its place. Android, and Android runs on all of these devices, okay? Um, it won't be far when the smartwatch will be used to pay using NFC, or you know, in ten years there will be bank bank transactions done by voice recognition and authentication, maybe by your voice alone. 
Uh, it's not science fiction, it will come. Uh, the question is only when. Um, I just read, it's not in the, in the slide, but <clears throat> I just uh, read uh, like a week ago that the number of attacks on Android finally uh, got uh, almost even the number of attacks on PC, uh, on the Windows PCs, which, you know, we all know Windows is the most vulnerable and most popular system. So no, Android is catching up, not only in the good way. Um, this is, you know, the standard scary, scary slide. This is, I think, this data is already almost a year old. Uh, today is more like 16 million. But that's not the point. What really bothers me is more the uh, where's the button? <coughs> the technological complexity that's increasing. Okay, if once it was just you know SMS Trojans. Uh, now you have uh, uh, crypto uh, ransomware um, <clears throat> on your Android. You have uh, intelligent spyware, not only from the NSA, etc., etc. So, guys, you should care about Android. Um, I'll quote uh, the bank robber Willie Sutton. The financial, uh, no, you know, I, I'm not, uh, in, in, no, I'm not uh, telling you anything. You, you know that you're being targeted all the time. Why do you rob banks? Because that's where the money is. Okay, but you already know that. Um, the problem is that statistics uh, back uh, this uh, uh, quote as well. <coughs> this would be Target, right? And 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 uh, other similar cases. Where, by the way. You know, what did they steal? What exactly data records uh, uh, were lost? This is basically credit card information, mostly, right? <clears throat> and you guys are in a, a you know, respectful second place. Um, you know, don't, uh, don't let it happen to your way. Um, and this is from, a, from our friends at Kaspersky from like a few weeks ago report. Um, Half the attacks on Android are targeting financial data. This is what people are after. Okay, it just grows from year to year. This is you know the, the graph of, of, of uh, financial malware, of banking uh, malware families, and this is so you know so exponential that it looks almost fake. Um, what it tells me most of all is that crime pays. Okay, uh, the code name Russian mafia guy doesn't care about new technology, wearables, whatever. They care about money. And if they keep doing that and they only increase their volume of operations, it means it works. They make money. Okay, so my second uh, call to action for you is that these are not, you know, ideology, guys, <coughs> and these are not the NSA, okay? If the NSA wants your data, today they will get your data, okay? We don't really believe that uh, we have much to do about it. But that's not the enemy. Uh, well, at least in this sense. Uh, no politics. <laughs> no politics. Um, <clears throat> all you need to do, you know, to, to defeat or at least uh, to reverse this process is to make the uh, the uh, the attack, the financial attack, difficult enough to be not cost efficient. Uh, that's not as, as easy uh, done as said. Uh, as they said, it has you know the freelancer hacker. Uh, is a phenomenon that's on the rise. Uh, this guy specializes in spam. This is a bot herder, etc. I can talk for for hours about you know uh, the uh, underground economy. It's actually really fascinating. Uh, come, come catch me at, at lunch or something. Um, <clears throat> but all uh, all we need to do is to put more and more hurdles in front of the attacker until he not necessarily gives up. Just well, I'll find some other you know maybe some other company or another industry to attack because it's more cost efficient. Okay, great. So, now that I hope I got you a little bit scared, but, but you know, less optimistic, uh, just to, you know, a quick recap, what exactly malware does, you know, what do I mean by banking or, or in general Android malware? Usually the problem is that they exploit user innocence. Today, this is the main vector of attack on, you know, just ordinary people. Uh, this can be your clients, this can be your you know, company employees, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, to, to give you a, a, you know, the classical example is you want to download you know, the newest Angry Birds, but it costs some money, and you're, you know, you're a 12 year old who's playing on his dad's uh, iPad or whatever, uh, or you know, tablet of your choice, 
and you don't want to pay, you Google, uh, you know, download Angry Birds for free, you actually click one of the links, you download an APK, who was repackaged, which means basically some virus was added onto it, and you can, you can actually get to play Angry Birds, but, you know, in the background, some bad guy just, you know, installed uh, an app on your device. Um, this is, like, social engineering goes here. Uh, all forms of it, spam, SMS spam, which is a different, you know, vector of attack uh, than, than email, etc. The other vector is actually exploitation of Android architecture, which is, this is what we mean when we say there was an exploit in thus and thus. Okay, so this is tech stuff versus humans. Um, today, the, the, the majority of attacks are we're targeting humans versus technology, but this trend is shifting. Um, this is like a somewhat reminiscent of the Windows 95 era, where you know you send exits and people actually click them, and then you could run code on their PC, which was fun. Um, well, not for the user, um, but <laughs> <laughs> and the situation is is, is slightly reversing uh, with time, uh, both because there is. Uh, slowly but rising awareness from users about uh, you know, the dangers of, uh, of, uh, of, of Android as well, on mobile in general, <clears throat> and because people are learning how to use, you know, <laughs> how Android works. Mm. So, yeah, so, so now I'll get to like five minutes of actual hands-on stuff. I know this, don't be scared, okay, it's not that, <laughs> yeah, not that big deal. So, uh, right, like Android Structure 101. Okay, this is your app. Like your, this is our Kitty Bank app, uh, the bank we, use, we, we, we wrote up in like a couple of days just for demonstration purposes. <clears throat> and these are our system services. Now, what the heck do I mean? This is an app, we all know what an app means. Um, and the idea behind the Android uh, structure of security is that I want to limit the app as much as possible. This is permissions, this is an, uh, any app can't talk to other processes, to other apps on the device, etc. Now that sounds like a good idea. Okay, uh, uh, Windows should have done that uh, in the first place and not only like you know, from 2000 and onwards. Um, so if, for example, I want to get you know, access to your camera, this is hardware, so I need to ask for permissions when I install, and then I talk to the system service, which is basically a different app that comes with your Android, <coughs> and he shows you actually what's going on in the camera. Great. The same goes for a keyboard. Uh, now, we all know that you can install custom keyboards, right? Android is very popular for its customization options, which is, well, I believe that's a great idea. But it comes with a price. For example, uh, <coughs> let's repackage a keyboard and then install my delicious keyboard instead of the uh, original one. That actually happened, okay? This is a story from like a couple of years ago. Uh, <clears throat> the Swift key can be repackaged, yeah, and then all your keystrokes are being uh, logged to the attacker server. Now, in Windows, that would be somewhat difficult to implement. You need to install a driver that logs keystrokes, etc. You need to be technologically relatively advanced. In Android, no need, you just hope for the best and ask for permissions from the user. Can you please install my keylogger? And more often than not, that actually works. Okay. Um, great. So, but going back to the Android architecture, uh, we have you know the problem that if I want to communicate from one process to another, to another, I need to you know somehow make them talk. We just said that I you know discriminate and I separate them. Uh, Forcefully. <clears throat> so there's a, pro a mechanism called the binder. It doesn't matter the technical details. Uh, that is responsible for all communication between all services, between apps, between app and, and, and Android, etc. Okay, great. So why should we care? Uh, yeah, everything goes with the binder. <clears throat> so I'll show you in the demonstration in, in, in one minute. This is uh, an app that you just, you know, we wrote uh, for demonstration purposes. We didn't use actual banking app because we assume you guys will sue us if we hack something. Um, <coughs> so, don't sue us. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so, so this is you know this is a, a really really simple way. I get some account, so I want to transfer you know some dollars. Then I wait for authentication uh, from uh, authorization from the banking server, which is the only part that actually matters, right? All that matters is what's written in your backend server, <clears throat> and I get back to the right to, to the process. So let's say I couldn't get uh, the user uh, uh, you know password or or because he's using biometric uh, sign-in or whatever. <clears throat> so instead, I'm gonna try to tr hijack the transaction using the binding mechanism that we just discussed. Okay, and we'll see uh, how it goes. Um, I know how it goes because you know it's recorded, so I'm not, so I'm cheating. <laughs> but come on. By the way, you can see in the corner there that you know I'm from Israel, so local time is it's 3 a.m. So if I'm you know talking rubbish, it's, it's because of the time. It's not because I'm stupid. Uh, <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so we're, we want to transfer under the thousand uh, kitty bucks or whatever. Um, <clears throat> So you'll see here on the yeah. the central screen is the only one that matters. Okay, this is uh, what the server sees. You see that we're already logged in. It doesn't matter. Um, we're waiting for a transaction, and you see transfer successful. You see a new line on the server side: the to account, from account, and the right amount. Okay, wonderful. Everything works. Now I'm gonna <coughs> install my. Uh, I will patch it into the binder binder uh, mechanism. This is basically done by installing Angry Birds with my code and using one of the widely popular root exploits for Android, right? Um, <clears throat> okay, great. Now I'm I'm connected to the binder uh, system. I want to do the same thing, and this time we'll see what changes. You'll see on the upper uh, on the upper screen what my book, what my malicious code inside the binder sees. Okay, so the user doesn't know any different. Uh, he will, you know, he inputs exactly the same uh, the same task. And wait, okay. <clears throat> and now we see it up there that first of all uh, the transfer is nine hundred thousand dollars and not one hundred thousand because you know I want to be rich. And the real problem is that the two field, which is, you know, who I'm giving my money to, is now the lead account, the one, two, three, seven. Um, so that's great, and the user sees, you know, that everything is fine. See, transfer successful, and the bank server got a different uh, message. Now, <clears throat> this is, you know, I'm just bragging because this is research we did like a few months ago uh, with exploitation of the Android architecture, but what am I trying to say? This is just an example that like, we believe that when malware will graduate to the level of you know of PC malware that's uh, been around for like 10 years uh, at least, <clears throat> this is the kind of attacks that you have to do. Okay, this is this is it's not even in your app. Okay, it's attacking the system itself, um, and this is like this is coming. Okay, uh, this is just an example, right? Because. Uh, like, Again, we believe this will be a prominent mechanism to be attacked, but it's not the only example. And um, so, what can we do? Well, there are two, two vectors uh, of defense. First, if you're an app developer, which means you know, your app developers that are developing apps. <laughs> um, <clears throat> as you in the words, don't trust the user's phone as much as you can. Okay, now we all kind of know it, right? Uh, that, you know, uh, Phones are you know, endpoint uh, endpoint devices are dangerous, <clears throat> but what can we do? Minimize use of native services. There are some banks already implementing in-app keyboard. Okay, they implement their own keyboard exactly to defend the user from his own let's call it innocence, not to be rude, um, <clears throat> so that I can trust my keyboard because it's inside the app. I don't trust the external uh, keyboard that he uh, installed. Uh, what else can be done? Uh, encrypt all sensitive data, you all know that, right? Because whenever I transmit credentials or transaction details, you really want to encrypt it while it's through the internet, right? But not only through the internet. Assume that your environment where you are running on your endpoint client
online. By the way, it's the same for PCs, but, but in Android it's even, it's even worse right now because, you know, it's newer. Um, <clears throat> encrypt everything that you can. Um, if you're a CISO, well, that's my best advice. Uh, no, like, seriously. Okay. Um, well, yeah, yeah, you know, it sounds funny, but it's not the lost co as lost a cause as, as you might think, okay? Um, don't trust antiviruses on mobile for now, okay? There's a big problem with, with um, endpoints, uh, antiviruses specifically, because they are limited by the permissions that Android gives any app. It's like, you know, basically your antivirus and Angry Birds can do pretty much the same thing. So, and the antivirus will get more permissions between, because you'll click, you know, give permissions, but antiviruses can't scan the memory layout of other processes. They can't monitor them in real time. They can't see when someone is messing with, with stuff inside the, the internals, for example, the binder uh, mechanism uh, or anything else. Simply because antivirus, you know, vendors have to play by the rules, why attackers don't. Antiviruses can't, you know, root your device against your will. Attackers don't care. This is the bit. And by the way, iPhones are not really better. Um, they're mostly, you know, Apple are mostly uh, cocky. Uh, then, like, they have a, a safer architecture, but I'll talk about it not during the presentation because we don't have time. Um, but there are enough, you know, vulnerabilities in iPhone and, and iOS uh, and, and Mac as well. Um, use, you, you call it in general, next gen uh, firewall with all kinds of, you know, variations. Um, Personally, I am a believer in sandboxing, okay? You know, whenever you install something or download a file or a doc or a PDF or whatever, run it in a secure environment first, see what it does. It's not bulletproof, but it's much better than, you know, just trusting, you know, uh, stupid uh, antivirus signatures or, 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 or binary firewall rules, okay? Uh, <clears throat> Again, the point is not to be 100% bulletproof, it's just to be, you know, not cost-efficient for the guy to attack. And by the way, maybe it's not politically correct, but um, if your bank is more, is like, twice as secure as the other guy's bank, the attacker will go to the other guy's bank, okay? So, just think about that. Um, one last point that I wrote uh, down. <clears throat> um, my team and I are always looking for interesting leads, um, you know, to, to re for interesting malware to research, and we would love to cooperate with whoever you know wants to talk to us. Um, you know, if someone is attacking you, then it's probably interesting because, well, you know, <laughs> you're an interesting target. Um, and one last point: uh, I, I learned about your data retention uh, uh, law uh, yesterday, and. Just like a quick, uh, like a quick note. Um, if you're gonna save a bunch of, of user data interaction, etc., uh, this is gonna be a, a next level game. Okay, you're painting a really big, you know, bullseye on your forehead for for uh, nation-sponsored level attacks. Uh, because you know, the NSA will kill <laughs> for, for 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 history that records, especially financial stuff. Uh, so just as you know. For you to know, um, be aware and, and be afraid. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. I hope you didn't uh, be you weren't too scared of hands on stuff. So we weren't scared before that formal comment. We all are now. So. Uh, Anyone care to be brave enough to venture a question forward and potentially paint a target on their forehead by doing something? <laughs> Anyone under attack at the moment would like to discuss the strategy for getting out from underneath that? No, no one wants to do that one either. Seriously though, any questions from the audience out there? If you're scared now, just catch me later somewhere. In a dark alley somewhere with people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, does anyone have a question for Michael Shalit before we let him wander off? There's some incredibly interesting information there, so. All right, we've got one brave soul at the back. Microphone on its way down now. Michael, Sean Kay with Bank. So I should thank IBM first of all because they gave us the information I'm out to share. 
through their uh, their research lab. So we asked them to look at Indian Bank in uh, how often we appeared in uh, new malware that was appearing uh, through their research labs, and these that days uh, to horrify my board and try and uh, push the investment envelope, I guess, into this space. But um, clearly, there's a whole bunch of information that and so it tells you you need it somewhere. No, it means that they should shut up like that. <laughs> the, uh, the, the issue for uh, you know, a small bank, um, lots of organisations here will have uh, you know, a lot of insight about what's going on, but maybe not the resources to know what to do with that information. So while we do have you know, technical skills in the team, I guess uh, you clearly are a leader here of what you'd expect to find inside an organisation. So the question really is, from the malware perspective, where do you see small organisations getting the best bang for buck from uh, the Intel side? Uh, okay, first of all, um, basically you're asking uh, uh, you know, a product solution question. Basically, I'm not the guy to answer because you know I have dreams and how stuff should work. If if they only let me do stuff my way, and then there's like the product limitation, like no, we can't, we don't have the capacity, and the, I don't know, the the chip will blow up and stuff. And you know they're right. You know? I don't know, maybe it will blow up. Um, <laughs> so, so that's you know that's really uh, correct. Um, the next level is I would use you know uh, as much uh, I would try to ride the wave. Of uh, you know bigger companies and you know there are a lot of security vendors, <coughs> us included, but, but many others that are trying to you know to, to do active research and you know publish their results, publish recommendations, and publish you know we saw this and this malware and then be you know use this uh, signature or use this product or, or sometimes even you know uh, specific scripts to remove that malware from your from your PC or organization. So and that's free. So you know that's the biggest bang for your buck. Um, for specific products, I'm sorry, man, I don't even know the prices, so, you know, ask, ask a lot of the sales guys. <laughs> okay, any further questions, Sir Michael? No, in that case, then we might thank you again, Michael, for your time. So,